Novak! Is it time? I'll be leaving in a few minutes. He's due at the dinner at eight. I'm ready, darling. Yeah. Ah. I'm exactly nine seconds late. And very beautiful. Thank you, darling. Mm. Considering your age and the pace you've gone. Mm. so sorry, but, but I'm afraid the bullet had ruptured her heart. She, she died on the operating table. Oh. Oh. No, I am so sorry. For a while, Governor. Yes. My wife has just died. to fail, but I don't think one can really blame Scotland Yard. I know. It's a completely impersonal murder. Exactly. 
I can shoot any one of those Kias down there, and no one would suspect me of it because of the complete absence of motive. You've made the point. I only wanted you to know what you were taking on, Stuart. And just why am I taking the case on? John Burnham is a very important man. Oh, to whom? The world. Well, all right, how is he important? And that you will find out in due course. Great, you ask a simple question? Stuart, find whoever killed his wife and watch over John Burnham like a guardian angel. Enemies? Mary? Never in our whole life. Not one. Then it was a completely impersonal murder. That's what the police said. About all they said, as a matter of fact. Would you like a drink? Uh, no, thanks. I will, if you don't mind. No, please. See, what you're suggesting is that some complete stranger killed my wife for no reason at all. Yeah, unless the bullet was intended for you. You surprised? Well, I doubt if I have any enemies either. I'm too inoffensive. Uh, but important. Me? Important? Well, so I've been told. You've been misinformed. No. I, I was born in London of average parents. And I went to school where I was an average student, and I went up to Oxford where I was an average scholar. And I now teach at London University where I'm an average professor. Uh, average, 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 Mr. Sullivan. But you've written several books. With a huge circulation among graduate students. No, oh, Mr. Sullivan, I think you'll find I'm as inconsequential a man as you could possibly find. Mr. Burnham, about the, uh, uh, well, the... My aberration, no? Uh, your word, not mine. Do you think I'm lying, mistaken? You have to be. You were shocked, dazed, terribly upset. You saw something that wasn't there. Did I? Do you believe in ghosts? No. No. The only absolute truth is mathematics. Before we left, I put out the lights in here. Now, Mary, she put these lights out here. When I got out of the taxi, the door was open. She was standing on the porch, smiling. Now, after a moment, she came inside and she closed the door. And when you came inside? Nothing. But the lights were on. Well, anybody can turn on lights. Who? I don't know, somebody. Mr. Sullivan, I'm an economist. I'm concerned with facts, with percentages, with figures. Now, I'm certainly not unduly over-imaginative. And I think that I'm as well-balanced as the next chap. I'm sure you are. But I'm telling you that I saw her standing just outside under the porch lamp. Now, I saw her as clearly as I see you now. After she was dead. We, therefore, commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I've done some research. On what? Ghosts. 22% of the people in this country believe that ghosts exist. You must be joking. I'm not. There were 106 recorded apparitions in England last year. I couldn't get the figures for America. It's probably higher. Well, what have you been reading, Hamlet? I'm only telling you, that's all. If 22% of the people believe in ghosts, then 22% of the people are fools. Funeral's over. Yeah. Is that all you have to say? What do you want me to say? I don't know Burnham personally. I never met him in my life. John Burnham is one of the biggest dangers we've ever had to face. OK, we've got a job to do and we'll do it. Just don't blow your cool. I'm sorry. I take it more seriously than you do. No, you don't. You just show it more. Where are you parked? In the back. All right, off you go. Why is a professor of economics so important? What's he involved in? I haven't even a glimmer. 
I adore working in the dark. Ours is not a reason why. What do we do, just sit here? No. We'll take it in shifts. Four hours on, four hours off. I'll go first. Fine. I'm starved. Mr. John Burnham? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Darling, I've been terribly stupid. I left a cigarette burning in the bedroom. Be it, darling. Make sure I haven't set the house on fire, will you? No. No. I just... What happened? I was... Uh, uh, are you all right? I was... I was sitting at that desk when the telephone rang. Again? Hello? Darling, I'll pick you up at the university at five. Is that convenient? Who are you? What are you trying to do to me? up a few minutes ago and she said that there was a cigarette burning in her bedroom and mr. Sullivan yes there was
Miss Hurst. It was Mary's voice. It wasn't. Don't keep saying that! But I, I was married to her for 17 years. A mimic, an actress imitating her. Not well enough to deceive even me? Yes, even you. Hello. Oh, that's fine. Thanks very much. Goodbye. From now on, all your incoming calls will be monitored. If this woman calls again, keep her talking. And the call can be traced. Only if you keep her on the line. And that can't be done in less than four minutes through a London exchange. All right. All right, I'll, I'll try, I'll try. Now, what about Elton Flores? The van was stolen from their Knightsbridge branch between about 2.30 and 3 o'clock. It was found parked at 4.22, about a mile away. The police are checking for fingerprints. What about the, um, card? Genuine. It matches your wife's handwriting exactly. Spectroscopic examination of the ink reveals that the card must have been written at least three months ago. Think back. A birthday present she gave you, an anniversary gift, anything. Well, yes, that's possible. I mean, we often gave each other presents. What else? The plant. It was sprayed with a solution of 30% nitric acid. Nothing supernatural. A simple chemical reaction. But, Sullivan, to get the card, somebody must have broken into the house. Right! The same person who turned on the lights and the bathtub tap. But why? And what's the reason for it? And what's behind it? What can anybody possibly gain from these... Well, practical jokes isn't strong enough. The whole thing is diabolical. If that's her, remember, keep her talking. Backtrace, Vincent 9840. Mary, where are you? The battery's almost new, so it can't be that. But the starter won't turn over. Mary, I want to see you. Darling, I'll call you back. There's somebody at the door. Did you get anything on that? Not even the exchange? Sullivan. Mr. Sullivan, that call timed at just over 30 seconds. We couldn't even trace back the exchange, let alone the number. Yes, I know. Oh, an operator, Mr. Burnham will be going to bed now, so you needn't call back unless you have something to report. Maybe we'll have better luck next time. Uh, thanks for your trouble. Sullivan? Yes? That business with the car. We did buy a battery about three months ago. And one morning, the car wouldn't start. And Mary did ring me at work. You mean you actually had that conversation in the past? Yes. Or well, one very like it. I mean, I can't remember the exact words. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Mr. Burnham, are you sure you don't mind being left alone tonight? No, no, I'll be fine. I don't mind bedding down on the sofa. It's not necessary. I'll be quite all right. He thinks. I wonder how long it'll take. I don't know. Depends on how mentally stable he is. Now, if you were in Burnham's shoes... Spare me, please, the normal-minded lad. Give me every time the youth a little mad. Herman Melville. No. John Ruskin. Paul, you've been reading again. You think I'm stupid, don't you? Not at all. You're just a natural-born sadist. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I am. You can kill without the slightest compunction and feel no guilt afterwards. I think it's about time we sent for Willie. Yeah. You know, I hate leaving him alone. Well, that's the way you wanted it. There is a policeman watching the house. What's he doing now? Getting ready for bed. Some sleep. 
sleep. Please. What do you bet he didn't take sleeping pills? Nothing. I must say, it's a fascinating psychological experiment. Fascinating. What's some misshapen guinea fowl that can't fly? Seven letters. Penguin. Perfect. Ah, it'll be Willie. I'll get it. Time to get up, darling. Rise and shine. Back trace Vincent 9840. Mary, won't you tell me where you are? You've got a 9.30 lecture. It's Tuesday. Breakfast's in 20 minutes, so do hurry, darling. liquidity. Discount houses as holders of short bonds. No wonder they're not best sellers. Uh, Burnham's considered to be the leading economist in Europe, maybe even the world. Naturally, there's no police record. He hasn't even had a parking ticket in four years. Harmless, innocent, highly intelligent man. You know that night his wife was shot, he was speaking at a banker's club dinner? Sullivan. Yes? Well, is the policeman all right? Well, what about Burnham? All right, I'll be there. Burnham's collapsed. The policeman watching the house was knocked out. I don't care what any of you say. I saw Mary last night, standing in that doorway. You call it a ghost, a vision, apparition. You call it what you like, but I saw her. The light was on. I was wide awake. And she was there. Listen, Burnham. I saw your wife die. And we all saw her buried. We 
We saw our coffin buried. Not one of us here has any guarantee as to who or what was in that coffin. We'd better let Mr. Burnham get some rest. I've given him some sedation. I'll be down in a minute. best to get some sleep. <laughs> Try and put everything out of your mind. Much more of this and I won't have any mind left. From the disjointed quality of the conversation, she never replied to a direct question. Therefore, the voice had to be recorded. Burnham was right. Nobody could mimic his wife's voice well enough to fool him. Got it. I knew I was... the only possible explanation. And what's more, by dialing this number, hanging up before the phone rang, every word said in this room could be heard and or recorded. What's the range of these things? About a half a mile, maybe more. Well, that narrows it down a little. Not much. How many extensions are there? Only the one in the bedroom. Well, when he's asleep, check it out, will you? This won't stop the calls, mind you, but at least we know now it's not a voice from the grave. Oh, doctor, how's the patient? Well, he's... Very nearly at the end of his emotional rope. So what happens? Well, how shall we put it? Every man has his share of irrational fears, private nightmares. Burnham is what we call a genius. Now, sometimes the borderline between genius and insanity is almost non-existent. Meaning he might crack up. Another couple of bad shocks and he could quite easily have a complete schizoid break. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, goodbye, Doctor. Thank you very much. Annabelle, just where is the Charles Dickens of the paperbacks? Paris. The way you're lighting me, I should look like one of the Smith brothers of the Vatican. Oh, I'd say more like an aging Dublin bricklayer. Could I ask what this is in aid of? Yes, you may. At long last, the distinguished creator of Mark Cain is to be featured on the cover of Time magazine, with or without the aid of Miss Bronson here, who will never do for photography what Bach did for music. But that will not deter her. She will carry on regardless. You're very funny. In a grotesque sort of way. Hold it, Jason. That's enough, I think. I presume your photographs, like yourself, will be overdeveloped? You've presumed ever since I arrived. My assistant will pick up the lights in an hour. And in spite of your lousy manners, I'll thank you for your charm, courtesy and charity. Oh, charity fiddlesticks. I'd wolf caviar in front of starving children. Mr. King. I've lied to you. Oh. I did read one of your books, The Return of Mark Cain. I found it rather difficult. Well, next time, try moving your lips. It wasn't that. It just bored me rigid. The Return of Mark Cain makes the return of Sherlock Holmes long overdue. Bye-bye, Miss Hurst. Plastic bag of acid. You met your match at last. Now, where were we? Burnham went into the bathroom, and the bathtub tap was running. Mr. Burnham? Well, I promise you that I don't. That takes care of the plumbing. Now for the rest of it. 
A man knows that you're going to your wife's funeral. He breaks into this house, goes straight to the cellar, and turns off the water at the mains. Then he comes up here, and... takes out your wife's negligee and her slippers. He drapes the negligee over the footstool, places the slippers so. Then he turns on the taps, but no water, because, of course, he's been turned off in the cellar. Next. He takes out a cigarette. Selects a lipstick. Which he applies judiciously. Then he goes to the window and waits. In due course, you pull up outside in the funeral car. Lights a cigarette and places it so. Then he rushes down to the cellar while you're getting out of your car. He hears the telephone. He hears you come up the stairs into this room. He waits a few seconds. Then he turns on the tap at the mains. No phantom, Mr. Burnham. No ghost. All perfectly simple. I must admit that it does make sense. Of course it does. But you still haven't explained the fact that I saw her. Well, that's just it. You saw her. Nobody else did. Exactly. You mean I was seeing things? Oh, I do quite often. Usually with a more tangible spirit. If even one other person had seen her as well. All right. All right, I'll admit that, too. It's the only possible explanation. Hello? May I speak to Professor Burnham, please? Who's calling, please? This is Dr. Morton of the University. Do you know Dr. Morton? Yes, very well. I shall be very ill about eight o'clock. Sure. Hello, Richard. Uh, Burnham, look out of your bedroom window. <coughs> now you can all see her. I want you to check out a car for me. A gray Cortina, registration GMT 609B. That's mine. Hang on a second. What did you say? That's my car. Oh, sorry, Michael. I wash out the whole thing. Or well, rather, our car. We both drove it. Well, where do you keep it? Across the street. A garage under Prince's Court. Stuart. I think we'll speed things up. It's time the press was called in. Release the whole story? Why not? And a couple more visits from his wife, and you and Willie can disappear. 
So they've duplicated her coat. Looks like they've duplicated her as well. Unless, of course, she's still alive. It's one sure way of finding out. Yes, that occurred to me, too. I'll think about it. In the meantime, go and check out the car. Oh, and Annabelle, then get to work on the coat. Still alive. Still warm. What was the name of the man who phoned? Dr... Morton. Do you remember his exact words? He told Burnham to look out of the window. Not quite. He said, Burnham, take a look out of your bedroom window. He's left me behind. Look out of your bedroom window, Burnham. How do you know that Burnham was in the bedroom? I don't know. Obviously, he could see him. Wife was shot in the garage. Somebody's been watching Burnham. Somebody in this building. The police questioned all the tenants in the building. They've all been here for years and all on long leases. Well, just because you've got a long lease, it doesn't mean that you're an innocent Anglo-Saxon virgin. No, I suppose not. In People in Glass Houses Shouldn't, Mark Kane disguised himself as a window cleaner. Sullivan, this is nonsense. You saw the death certificate, the certificate of disposal from the funeral parlor, and the autopsy report. What more do you want? Quite honestly, I don't know. Listen, Mary Burnham died on the operating table while I was attempting to remove a bullet from the right ventricle of her heart. But we saw her very much alive. You did not see her. Mary Burnham is dead. Dead legally, dead physically. Dead and buried. <laughs> Flight 117 at 3 p.m. Well, will you tell him I'll pick him up in the VIP lounge? Thank you. Well, you look like the bearer of good news. There were 37 dozen of those coats made. They were sold to nine different stores in London. And you went to them all? Everyone. Nothing. Well, you tried. That I did. We all saw her, quite clearly. Annabelle, King, and me. And Burnham is in bad shape? Well, according to the doctor, he's on the edge of a schizoid break. He's quite convinced his wife is still alive. Then get an exhumation order and open the coffin. I'm not going one inch further with this case until I know why Burnham is so important. I have to be at Downing Street in 50 minutes. Not one inch. All right, Sullivan. He doesn't know it yet, but John Burnham is to become the next head of the International Monetary Fund. Why didn't he tell us? Well, Burnham doesn't know himself yet. The appointment hasn't been ratified. I gather Burnham believes the free world monetary system needs a complete overhaul. It seems that lately it's been showing distinct signs of coming apart at the seams. I never understood why. Well, the volume of trades rising faster than the supply of money. Evidently, Burnham has some revolutionary theories. He wants to abolish most of the present rules and regulations. Are they finished? Open it. Vultures are gathering. Are they all reporters? Including the distinguished London correspondent of the New York Times. Do you really think it'll work? Burnham will be completely discredited. An unbalanced hysteric. We'll finish it tonight. Mm. No, I have no idea who leaked the story. 
Yes, yes. Yes, I promise the matter will be fully investigated. Thanks for calling. Bye. Karl Schiller, German economics minister. That's the sixth call this morning, including one from the U.S. Secretary of the Treasury. Well, it's pretty clear what's happening. Oh, yes, perfectly. John Burnham will drastically overhaul the Western world's monetary system. And that wouldn't please the Eastern powers one single bit. They want the system to collapse. Wouldn't it have been easier to shoot Burnham? Well, yes, of course. But that isn't what they want. They want him discredited. Well? The funeral people were outraged at the suggestion. That's where it happened. The coffin was left unguarded overnight. Security arrangements are absolutely nil. I want John Burnham moved. Where to? To a nursing home in the country, somewhere quiet and exclusive. I want him out of that house in one hour. Oh, good morning to you. And where's your mother? I'm your window cleaner. You can't come in, fish face. My mummy's gone out. I'm not surprised she's gone out with a little brat like you as a child. sir. Kane Window Cleaning Limited, sir. Come in. Right. In here. All right, sir. Right. Now I am a bachelor. I live all alone and I work at the weaver's trade. And the many, many times that I look into his eyes, he reminds me of that fair young maid. He reminds me of our winter time and of their summer too. And the many, many times that I looked into his... Oh, thank you, operator. Right, 10.30 exactly. Right, thank you. Drop it. Drop it. Oh, I was just checking on the time, sir. Who is he? I saw him get into Burnham's house. So, uh, you wash windows, do you? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I do that, sir. I do, I do. Then get at it. Oh, yes, right. Get at it. Oh, I do that, sir. Yes, all night. I... Outside. Outside, sir? Uh, you heard what he said, outside. Oh, right, sir. Right. Outside, sir. Yes. Right, outside. I will. Uh, outside, sir, yes. Uh, uh, could I have me, me little bucket, sir? Oh, that's very kind of you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. How did he find us? I don't know. But you have ten minutes to get ready. Can you let me in, sir? Uh, please, sir.
to get up. I'll see myself out. What's going on? Let's ask you. Explains the ghost of Mary Burnham. 